Welcome to the Saving Lives Podcast. I'm Eddie Joe. For historical context, today is the 25th of February of 2025, and we're going to be discussing the IV fluids that we give in patients who we need to resuscitate, in this case, sepsis-induced hypotension. We're going to be talking about lactated ringers versus normal saline. And the title of the article is Lactated Ringers or Normal Saline for Initial Fluid Resuscitation in Sepsis-Induced Hypotension. It was published in Critical Care Medicine just a couple, a couple weeks ago in February of 2025. As always, hat tip to the authors. Please read these data for yourself. This podcast is for entertainment purposes and not meant to be a basis of how you take care of patients, of course. But before we dive further into this article, a quick plug for my book, The Vasopressor and Inotrope Handbook. If you haven't picked up a copy yet, click in the show notes to go to my store, use the code podcast to save 10%, or you could buy it on Amazon if you don't want a signed copy. Now let's get started with discussing this study. Of course, this has to do with sepsis and fluid resuscitation, and giving patients who are septic and hypotensive IV fluids is usually the first line that we do. It's not call hospice, it's not start vasopressors. Patients usually get fluids first. Now, the issue is, what is the choice of fluids that we provide patients? Historically speaking, it has been saline. It's more readily available throughout the world. However, there has been a great push, and something that I've been doing for the last eight years or so on social media is moving more towards the utilization of balanced salt solutions, whether it be lactated ringers or plasmolite, for example, to help our patients. The reasons for this is because there is data out there that I've covered in the past, but it demonstrates that there is more hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis as well as renal vasoconstriction and acute kidney injury with the utilization of saline compared to lactated ringers or plasmolite. And you can definitely check out the SMART trial and the SALT D trial, those were two landmark studies that were published in the New England Journal of Medicine that demonstrated that, even though the number needed to treat was pretty high. But we're not talking about those two studies, we're talking about this one. And the reason why they're comparing lactated ringers to saline in these patients is because the 2021 Surviving Sepsis Campaign, well, they favor the utilization of balanced crystalloids over saline for initial fluid resuscitation. That being said, we're still seeing saline used quite a bit. Now, prior research, it primarily examined the utilization uh, prolonged fluid administration rather than the first one to three liters that are administered to patients in the emergency department or in the floors for that matter for sepsis-induced hypotension. So these authors, what they wanted to do is compare LR, lactated ringers, versus NS or 0.9% sodium chloride, I hate calling it normal saline, for the initial fluid resuscitation in these patients who have hypotension related to sepsis. So what did they do? Well, this is not a prospective randomized controlled trial. Excuse me as I mute my computer that an email just went off. But this was a secondary analysis of the CLOVERS trial. Now, the CLOVERS trial, not to get into it, was another fluid resuscitation study. And CLOVERS stands for crystalloid liberal or vasopressors early resuscitation in sepsis. And here they looked at 60 different U.S. ICU and emergency departments between 2018 and 2022. It's always important, in my opinion, to look at when the study was performed because it gives us insights as to what the practice patterns were at that time. That being said, since it was 2018 to 2022, it's relatively recent. So therefore, they're pretty much practicing how we're practicing today. And they had a population of... 1,000, excuse me, 563 patients with sepsis-induced hypotension, and 622 patients received LR versus 690 received saline. The intervention that these patients underwent was to receive fluid resuscitation, and they received between one to three liters of fluid before randomization. And what they did is that they analyzed outcomes based on whether the predominant initial fluid was either LR or saline. The primary outcome that they were looking for was mortality, 90-day mortality in this particular case. Now, I will say it's always hard to prove mortality as a primary outcome in any study, especially in a study like this. You need to have a pretty large sample size. 
Amongst the secondary outcomes, they looked at hospital free days at 28 days. They also looked at organ support requirements, whether it be whether the patient was on the vent, how long, vasopressors, renal replacement therapy, etc. And they also looked at serum biomarker changes. Amongst that, they looked at the chloride because, again, saline tends to cause a hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. There also is a decrease in bicarb in the patients who receive saline versus normalization of the bicarb in patients with LR, and it has to do with the lactate being converted into bicarb, but I'm not going to get into all those biochemical pathways. They also wanted to look at lactate and creatinine. So what was it that these authors found when they analyzed these data? First of all, with regards to 90-day mortality, they were able to find that the 90-day mortality in the patients that received LR was 12.2%. The group that received 0.9% sodium chloride, however, did have a higher mortality at 15.9% with an adjusted hazard ratio of 0.71, and the p-value was statistically significant. We could have arguments about all those statistical parameters because there's a lot of debate that's happening about how we evaluate studies in the background but I'm not going to bore you with that. The p-value was 0.043, which is statistically significant. Now, how do we interpret that, though? That's the important part. And it turns out that LR may reduce mortality by approximately 29% compared to 0.9% sodium chloride. So it's a check mark in the box that we should be using, and further affirmation for that matter, that we should be using LR as opposed to saline for initial fluid resuscitation of patients. Now, with regards to secondary outcomes, the first thing was hospital-free days, and the LR group was in the hospital less time than the saline group, and I'm not going to go over the numbers because the decimal points would drive you all crazy, but what it all means, how to interpret the difference in hospital-free days, is that there were 1.6 more hospital-free days than it, with LR as opposed to saline, so patients did get out of the hospital, in theory, sooner if they received LR as opposed to saline. So let's say you're an administrator and want to save 30 cents by using saline as opposed to LR. Well, you're going to save more money with the LR because it's going to get patients out of the hospital per these data 1.6 days sooner. Now, with regards to acute kidney injury, this is what I found interesting in this study, given that there was a statistically significant difference in both the salty D trial and the SMART trial with regards to renal outcomes. And again, there's a lot of nuance to that, but for the sake of this podcast, it was beneficial to use balanced salt solutions. Here, it was not statistically significant when it comes to acute kidney injury and how these patients did, whether they received LR or 0.9% sodium chloride. Now, one of the things that us intensivists we like to look at is all these labs and what does it do to the chloride, the bicarb, and all that stuff. But here, just from a numbers perspective, the numbers weren't as pretty with the 0.9% sodium chloride, where the patients who received saline, for example, had higher chloride levels and they had lower bicarb levels, which suggests a hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. So what do we do with all these data? Well, from a clinical perspective, we have more data affirming that LR might actually improve survival in sepsis, which goes along with the recommendations of the Surviving Sepsis Campaign, which has its faults for that matter. But here it says that LR is superior to using 0.9% sodium chloride. And other studies that have been done in the past, they, they have different outcomes and all that. We have to remember that this particular study says is looking at initial fluid resuscitation. In other words, the first one to three liters. So, you know, if you're in the emergency department, there had been this train of thought of, oh, you could use the first two liters could be saline and then you could switch it over to LR. Well, these data are telling us that that might not be optimal for the patients. You should possibly use LR from the get-go. From a mechanistic standpoint for, for clinical implications, You know, we do have data and old data for that matter and more recent data that saline does cause a chloride retention in these patients, which could lead to a metabolic acidosis, hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis to be more exact, as well as renal vasoconstriction. Versus LR being a balanced crystalloid, it has a lot less chloride in it. Well, you really don't have these effects. And plasma life for that matter has even less than LR. 
Now, hospital-free days, as I mentioned before, this was demonstrated to be shortened by the utilization of LR as opposed to saline. And, you know, this just means you're going to be saving ICU beds, hospital beds, and money for that matter, because it seems as if these patients ha are having a quicker recovery by using LR, as well as they're getting less severely ill, I guess is a way that we could look at it. Now, there are limitations to the study that we need to take into consideration. First of all, this is not a double-blind randomized controlled trial looking at this question. This is a secondary analysis. They had that other study, and they decided to do statistical jumping jacks with the data sets that they had. So that gives some, you know, limitation to this. Now, there are also confounders um, that come up because of that and has also excluded patients who received mixed fluids in other words both LR and saline but overall just to wrap up this podcast because I think we're going at 10 minutes or so right now which is a little bit long for me because my attention span is short um, this does demonstrate that LR could improve survival doesn't really uh, have much of an effect when it comes to renal outcomes and it does make the patient's labs look a little bit prettier when you use LR as opposed to saline so to wrap up this podcast, thank you very much for your attention today. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Again, check out my book, The Vasopressor and Inotrope Handbook. And if you have an article that you want me to break down for you, send it to me, eddiejoemd at gmail.com. I'd love to take a look at it and possibly create a podcast. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye.